From the Center for Agricultural Profitability at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, this is Nebraska Farmcast. I'm Ryan Evans, and with me today is Dr. Cheryl burkhart Creasel, Professor and Extension Specialist with Rural Prosperity Nebraska here at UNL. She's going to join me to discuss an issue that many communities might relate to, which is how to engage new volunteers and new ideas into established local events and activities. Dr. burkhart Creasel points out that we often hear comments like, we need new people, and it's the same people doing everything every year when it comes to community events. But making that transition to new leadership and volunteers is not always easy. Both established organizers and new community members wanting to help out can benefit from strategies to open up participation. For her insights on how to revitalize community events with fresh involvement, I am glad to welcome her back now. Hey, Cheryl, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. Thanks, Ryan. Good. Thanks for joining me. Um, So first, can you just talk about the significance that events play in smaller rural communities? Sure. Well, it seems this time of the year in the fall, we have a lot of community events. And I think part of that is um, just kind of getting ready for the holiday season. So community events, whether they're like an Oktoberfest or a community run or um, maybe even a church supper, uh, they really bring people together and and create that sense of belonging. And these can be um, small venues or they can be fairly large uh, community wide events. But we all seem to kind of have things that we uh, have on our calendars to bring people together. And what are some common roadblocks that you see that event organizers might run into when they're trying to recruit new volunteers? Well, really, there are can be a couple of things going on. Um, newer people in the community simply may not know about the opportunities to become involved uh, or really who to talk to to get started. And then people in the leadership roles for these events may not know or may not be comfortable with how best to transition new people into these activities, or they might even be a little wary of new ideas and possibilities. Um, You know, there's all sorts of things going on. Um, Because something isn't broken, um, they may be a little reluctant to uh, think about changes. Changes also can take some extra time, and there are some unknowns. So uh, if those things are in short supply, those kind of create some potential barriers uh, for change. Yeah, that's a great point. And you write about that in your new article on this topic, which listeners can find in the notes to this podcast, as well as on our Center for Ag Profitability's website, cap.unl.edu. You talk about those roles that established leaders have to play in community events. Um, Maybe they're folks who have organized these events for years. And as you mentioned, it might be hard for some of those leaders to be open to bringing new people into the fold. And frankly, I think as a lot of us know, sometimes it can just be very time consuming to get new people up to speed when you're in it for so long. So what are some strategies that you recommend that um, those event organizers who may have been doing this for a long time can use to kind of gently open up these roles to new volunteers and fresh ideas? Well, there's sort of roles and expectations on both sides. So uh, for the established leadership and then also for new people in the community. So one of the first places that I would start would be thinking about um, how you do recruitment really and and be more deliberate about getting the word out of where help is needed and what that could look like. Um, The other piece to that really is uh, also thinking about um, tasks in doable chunks. So a lot of people just don't have time to volunteer a lot of hours to do something, but if they're told to do, you know, a certain thing in a, you know, a three week period of time, or maybe in a month period of time, they can carve that out and actually feel pretty good about it. Um, The other thing is uh, sometimes when there are planning sessions, we kind of forget that um, there can be inherent roadblocks just getting people there. For instance, um, does that date or time conflict with school activities or is there childcare available or is the building where you're meeting, even accessible. All of those things just create barriers after barriers. And sometimes they may seem like little things, but they do add up. And so you need to be a little bit more deliberate about um, making things accessible and easy to participate. On the other side, for the people that are in those leadership roles, um, there can be some things they need to really think about too. If you've been involved with something for a lot of years, you really need to think about having an open mindset of 
just giving something a try, you know, um, nothing ventured, nothing gained. So uh, why not um, pilot it and do something a little bit different? Uh, and so that can really help uh, for the person um, in those leadership roles. So you've got to be willing to take a look at things with a fresh set of eyes and a new approach. And then for the potential new person, um, sometimes you have to have a, an appreciation of uh, of the past history of, of why it, it happens this way and what steps are in place to make it, uh, make it happen that way. And so that appreciation of um, the, maybe the history of the place, the, uh, the, what role that plays um, is really important. And then ask questions, you know, uh, sometimes things happen out of uh, circum, you know, just kind of by accident. Sometimes they're very deliberate and in the past, they have done different things, but this way has really been uh, one of the easiest ways to implement. So you may not, as a new person, know that all of, that there have been uh, lots of trials and errors, and this is the best approach. So there's a, a give and take both on the person in the established leadership role as well as the new person um, giving it a try. Yeah, that's great. And just to kind of wrap up here, what do you see as the the benefit to the community at large of having this mix of both established leaders and new volunteers working on these events? Well, community events and activities are just core actions that we have, and they really create a sense of belonging and uh, um, and they're just plain fun. I mean, uh, everyone enjoys it. It's sort of a, a way to sort of show off your community. So it, uh, it gives the community a bit of a personality and sparkle. It brings people together. A lot of times food's involved, which is always fun. So uh, it really creates and, and strengthens that sense of pride. And these are all good things. Uh, working together uh, creates that social capital glue that really makes a community a community. And it's really something we all need. Great. Well, that is Cheryl Burkhart Creasel, professor and extension specialist with Rural Prosperity Nebraska. She joined us today to talk about this issue that many communities can probably relate to in getting new volunteers to help out with community events. And you can read more about her insights on this topic in the article that's again posted here with the podcast in the notes or on our website at cap.unl.edu. Cheryl, thanks so much. Thank you, Ryan. Nebraska Farmcast is a production of the Center for Agricultural Profitability at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. For the latest research-based information and education resources to manage your farm or ranch operation, visit our website at cap.unl.edu. That's cap.unl.edu.